I'm glad you came back and I hope your action research project is, is shaping up really well. We're almost finished with the planning session. This is tutorial six and it is looking at your cycle one research question and it is taking action. In the past tutorials we've been doing a lot of planning to get to this point. Now there's one last planning thing that you need to do in this cycle and that is to create your uh, research cycle question. Um, early on you've framed a research question. Um, that's usually in the form of how do I improve the way in which I engage students in learning in my English class? Or how do I get more collaboration in my work team? Those are general questions and they suggest the area that you want to improve in. But before you start a, your first cycle of action research, you need to develop a cycle research question. And these um, don't start with how can I, which is the question, they start with the answer to that question. So for example, if you, if you were teaching, say, English literature, and your question might be, how do I get students more engaged in the concepts that I'm teaching? And then your action research cycle question might be something like, if I have my students assume the characters in the novel and engage in a, you know, use some form of technology to record their behavior, whatever you decide your action is going to be, then, then you would say, if I do this, how will it affect students' engagement or how will it affect students' comprehension um, of, the, of the concepts that I'm working on in this um, exercise? So in framing the cycle one research question, there are a number of things that novice researchers often have trouble with. And so in the resources, I've gone over a number of these. The first one, and it is pretty common, is the uh, issue of scope. How big or how small should my first action be? And of course that's up to you, but one of the things that is for certain is you can't make your whole work or your whole project your action research. So you have to pick a strategy or an action or a smaller part of your work because you can't study everything that you do. You're going to be looking at something and you're going to be trying to find the consequences of that action. So it's a good idea to start with something that's smaller in scope than, definitely smaller in scope than, you know, a large scale project or your whole work. Here's an example that might help you. Josh Berker was running a tech club. The tech club is not his action research, but one of the things that he noticed in the tech club was that he was not getting a high rate of participation by either girls or special needs students. So here's a few words from Josh about his identification of his cycle. Josh Berker, my action research question was how I could modify Tech Club to better consider the voices of girls or special needs students, specifically autistic students. For my first cycle, I wanted to know if I made a significant shift away from technical projects and towards digital photography and storytelling with images, would this increase the participation by girls in Tech Club and also increase their interest in what we were doing? I got this idea from reading research on gender differences in technology use, and I wondered if the activities at Tech Club were working on were the reason why girls weren't signing up. So my action was changing the projects we worked on, and the outcome that I wanted to study was the participation and engagement by different groups of kids, specifically girls and autistic students. The second issue that's really important when you're doing action research is to be clear on how action research is different from other forms of research. Often novice action researchers want to prove to others that something they're doing is effective. That's a situation where evaluation research would be really appropriate. So if you have a finding, you have a program that you think is really effective, but you want to use research to demonstrate how effective it is, then you're going to need to compare it to something else and you're going to need kinds of tool set that evaluation research brings to the activity. In action research, you are looking at something where you don't know what the outcome is going to be. 
it's something that you want to explore as a form of inquiry on yourself. It's, some, it's a change to something that you've previously done that you think you can do better by doing it in a slightly different way. The goal of, of action research is inquiry. Inquiry into your practice, deeper understanding of the ways in which people react or interact with the kinds of activities that you're going to put in place. Eric Ellis and Brooke Muller both want to say a little bit about how they made this shift. At first, I wasn't exactly sure what action research was and looked like. It took me a while, but when I stepped back and looked around my classroom, I realized I was doing action research, just informally. So I made the process more formal, taking it through all the cycles of action research. As I reflect now on that first project, was it was only the stepping stone for many great ones to follow. I have learned that an effective teacher is constantly in action research mode and is constantly gathering, collecting data, and analyzing it to enhance his or her performance. The transition in my mind was to distinguish action research from a stereotypical white lab image of research. That is, I didn't have an alternative concept of research from a very hypothesis-driven quantitative cause and effect approach. I'm not sure that I'd replaced that image by the t in my mind by the time I settled on my first cycle, but certainly by the end of my project, I'd come up with a, an additional way of thinking about what research meant. In my case, then, the first cycle really became a task in setting a baseline. I wanted to know where I was starting from, and then when proposing an action that I thought might produce a change. It also meant I needed to understand my own practice and my own thinking about my practice as a component of the research. This was also difficult since my mental, or my prior mental construct, I really held the researcher out as an impartial observer rather than as an interested participant. So, in a nutshell, my first cycle took shape when I let go of some misconceptions and embraced the idea that I had a role on both sides of the research. I was both researching and being researched. And that leads us to one other issue that sometimes is a problem with people who are doing action research uh, for the first time, and that's to think about an action that isn't a social action. So they will design a new program, they will say is their first cycle but it's not a social action. So you can't, even though it's an action, it, isn't, it doesn't have a, a social action for you to study, so it's, it's not your action research. It might be preparing for your action research. You might be preparing a tool that you will then find very useful in action research, but the action research starts when you try to implement that tool or implement that practice in a social setting. So it's important to remember that action research is always done on the social plane. The other important thing to remember is who owns the problem that you have set up. Because the people who own the problem with you are the people who should be involved in solving that problem. And sometimes we get way ahead of the curve with a vision that we have for how the change might go but we haven't shared that vision with others. And when we share it with others, we find that their way of looking at it reshapes the way we look at it. So it's important to not get too far out ahead with your own vision before you had a chance to really think about that vision in a collaborative setting. So often your first cycle is bringing together those people who own or are involved or care about the solution to this problem and discussing with them your plans and see how they see the problem and what kind of plans they have. And sometimes that completely reshapes the way you see the problem and it certainly can, can have an effect on shaping the action that you plan to take. Brad Poorman wanted to introduce technology to help solve the problem of education of lay ministers. But it turns out that the people who shared this problem with him um, weren't as eager to implement a technology solution to the problem. So he learned to listen to, to their um, concerns and frame a series of cycles that move them 
eventually pretty close to where he started, but it's important that he saw the need right from cycle one to work collaboratively rather than to push ahead with a single vision that was his. Early on, I came to realize that while it was my action research project, it was not going to be a solitary endeavor. It was going to require a collaborative effort. So my first step was to develop a plan to garner the support and cooperation of the necessary co-workers, committees, and administrators to embark on my action research journey. The third activity that in this session, so the first one was framing the, the cycle question, the second one was taking action, the third is really important to document the action that you're taking by writing in your blog. Hopefully you're keeping a blog and have been keeping it um, as you work through the planning process, but it's, it's vitally important to start keeping it now if you haven't been. Because you really want to see what happens and how you feel about what happens as you move along the cycles of action research. Because things will change and you won't be able to get back to the same mindset you had at the beginning. So it's really important for you to document your mindset at each point along the way so that you can get back to seeing how your understanding shifted over time. There are some exercises in the resources for how to make sure that your blogs to, are working for you. There are two things I tell uh, novice action researchers to think about when they're writing their blogs. First is reread your blog and could you see everything that took place in this blog? If you did, then, you're, then there's way too much description and not enough explanation, not enough thinking about causes. The second question you can ask yourself is, did I learn something new from writing this blog? Often insights come to us as we put ideas down in a linear form. And those insights are really important. It's important to mark them. You probably won't have a really deep insight every time you write a blog, but that's a marker of when you've written a really good blog is you will find that you've learned something new. Good luck in writing your cycle one question. I hope that you're successful in this cycle, um, but in success or not successful, I hope that you get deep insights about um, what's going on in your work setting as a consequence of your action. Come back for tutorial seven where we'll talk a little bit about data collection, um, which is an important part of your cycle. So, see you next time.